things. First, congratulations on your success with Hive. Thank you. What did you see in that that really enticed you to invest and, and become its chairman? Well, first of all, I was trying to get into the blockchain arena to have the first product in the marketplace. The first mover advantage is always significant. And I went to New York to the consensus conference and I saw Abigail Johnson, the CEO of Fidelity, which has $2 trillion, which is the second largest discount brokerage firm in the world, giving a speech, a keynote speech. She doesn't do an investment conference, but she's at a cryptocurrency event. To me, this was an epiphany of so something bigger is happening. So I was doing more and more research, and my friend Frank Schuster called me and said, I had this opportunity, I really don't know much, but the young guys all love it, and I had done more work, and I said, I will quickly jump on this, and I said, I can't launch a product, because the regulators are all worried about anti-money laundering laws, AML. However, this opportunity is that we don't have this problem. We mine and we create the coins, Bitcoins or Ethereum, and they're virgin coins, they're fresh, they're new. So we don't have this issue and I said, okay, I can launch a product, I'll have first mover advantage, and I'll put my money up and I'll go on as a chairman. And it's been a raving success. From, th from the seed idea, from $30 million to $300 million to a billion dollars, all within four weeks. Uh, now the model is really simple business-wise. We're going to go from a million dollars a week to a million, to sorry, a million dollars a month to a million dollars a week. So by March, we expect to have 50 million in revenue, have cash flow pushed to 35 million, and have GNA basically is small. That we'll have free cash flow of 25 million. Well, guess what? That's worth a billion dollars in the capital markets, especially when you're the only company that gives investors a direct access to the infrastructure and we're hoarding these coins to play these coins. That's why I put my money up. Mm -hmm. And it's because they're, you create these coins, Hive creates these coins. That's we, the... And we don't buy uh, from the open market. Maybe a hacker sold some of those bitcoins. We don't touch that. Mm -hmm. We're actually, the, we've been approached that our coins are worth a premium because they know they're cleansed, and then after that, the coins can be tracked. So Frank, Fidelity's Abigail Johnson speaks at this conference. Obviously, Fidelity is a major, major player. Is Bitcoin becoming more mainstream now? It is. You know, it's interesting or blockchain, you say, I should say. No, yeah. but Bitcoin, see, Bitcoin is like email was to waking up the internet. The internet people didn't understand at the beginning, but email they did, and that all of a sudden became more fascinating to use it. Bitcoin has woken people up to blockchain technology. Okay. And it has, like the financial institutions have 2,700 new patents of trying to use and apply this. The stock exchange, interesting enough, the New York Stock Exchange and USAA, the largest military insurance company in the world, invested in Coinbase in 2015. The valuation was 75 million, now it's 1.7 billion. What does Coinbase do? It allows you to send money in and guess what? Millennials love. Just like they love their Tinder for quick dates, well the same thing happens for moving money and investing. And they've replaced IPOs with ICOs, initial coin offerings. And they can open an account, in Canada you can do it on, on JAX, J-A-X-X, -X. in the US Coinbase is the biggest. But within five minutes you can open an account and send in up to $10,000 and own Bitcoin. Well it takes two days to open an account in a brokerage firm. Five minutes, two days, guess what? Your Coinbase is getting 50,000 new accounts a day. And when you open an account there, it can show up and there's a connection, a hyperlink with Fidelity and USAA. So you can look at your overall portfolio and you can say I own this stock, this ETF, this bond, this mutual fund, and I own $5,000 of the Bitcoin. That's the phenomena that's driving this. So it's becoming more mainstream, but is mass adoption still years away? It's, it's, it's exponential, mm. it's growing exponentially. Mm -hmm. What was the trigger point this year? Japan acknowledged and started using Bitcoin as a currency. Mm -hmm. So as soon as Japan said that, then South Korea said it, then we had this huge doubling and tripling of Bitcoin and Ethereum. So there is something happening, and every time we have North Korea launching a missile, we see not only bullion start to rise, we see Bitcoin and Ethereum rise, because it's now showing up as an asset class in Asia to diversify and also send money. So if you want to send money, 
and say you're in, in Canada and you want to send money back to the Philippines, to your family, the cost and the timelines of sending that money is too expensive. Bitcoin, send $100, cost you $2, and it's done in 10 minutes, yeah. not two days. Uh, not $25 on $100 overall cost of time. So, and you can do it from your iPhone, you don't have to go to Western Union Station. So I think the blockchain phenomena is only going to grow and as more people use Bitcoin, it's going to wake it up. And when you use these services, they create fractals. So you buy one Bitcoin and they can slice it for you to go buy a Subway, a sandwich. Mm -hmm. You can go buy Microsoft uh, Surface Computer. So it has many applications and uses. Well, it's interesting, there's been a few attempts to create Bitcoin ETFs, for example. Didn't make it through the red tape and regulation. So there's, ch there's still challenges ahead. It's not quite um, accepted as a, as a proper currency at the moment. Well, what would you say to that? Because the SEC and the OSC and other European regulators, anti-money laundering laws supersede the, the creation of any new product. Mm -hmm. That's just what it is. Mm -hmm. However, a derivative on the derivative of the price, that's okay. So you've seen launching in, in Sweden, uh, launched a derivative of the price of the of, of Bitcoin. So it's a derivative of a derivative. Mm -hmm. It's not the actual product. The CME is going to come out with one that's backed by gold. The yes. Royal Mint is partnering with the CME to create a Bitcoin backed gold. Okay. That will be huge for bullion like the GLD was for bullion ETF. And then you're seeing now they're going to come out next month in the CME. So the turf war also in America is the CME is looking at it as a commodity or a currency. The SEC is saying no it's a security so they get to regulate and the IRS is saying it's an asset to tax. So you have this sort of turf war of trying to determine who's going to oversee and regulate it. But it just grows and what the world's not aware of is crowdfunding. Last year was estimated $50 billion outside of any regulatory arm has been raising money and a lot goes into these ICOs, a lot goes into real estate outside of the normal channels, angel investing. We're talking about big money uh, and, and, and I think it's only going to grow. The, what, it's going to be important for regulators to say, how do we streamline our regulations to bring it back into the fold mm -hmm. rather than making it a barrier to entry so high that they force it away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Frank, what, do you, what advice do you have for investors who are looking to get into this space? It's very volatile. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest part, is you have to acknowledge the volatility of Bitcoin, Ethereum, is two times gold stocks. So gold stocks at an annual basis is 40%, bullion's 20%, but these currencies are 80 to 120%. So you have to be able to stomach it. The smarter investors put basically put 1% of their portfolio into Ethereum and Bitcoin. You can do that, as I said, in Canada, you can do Einstein, Jax, you can, Coinbase is the biggest, most substantial uh, fund in, in the US, uh, easily open account and own some of the coins. But don't run in and put a ton of money into it, experiment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You've mentioned a few companies, any, any picks you like? From, well, I'm very biased because we're the only company that is actually minting new coins and that deals mm -hmm. with that whole AML challenge and we're ramping it up for production so that by March, this is a real company. And if you look at uh, where we buy these video cards, NVIDIA, they have a $120 billion market cap and they traded 60 times earnings. Uh, if you look, whenever you have first mover advantage, you will trade at much higher multiples. Tesla, it trades at six times revenue per share. General Motors is 0.6. So it's recognizing, that's where my bias would be. Mm -hmm. Some of the other companies that are coming along, um, they really are not, they're adding the word blockchain, but probably the most easy, simple one is gold money. Mm -hmm. Gold money is taking Ethereum, taking Bitcoins, converting it into gold, and giving you a credit card, which is, has gold as an asset, and you've seen that stock double, and I think that that stock can double again and triple uh, their business model, because it's a very simple, clean model. So that would be my first real pick on that space. Mm -hmm. But there's going to be many new companies, and you'll be covering them. It's going to be a huge win for you, because you're going to be able to go and narrate and find the story of who's really in the blockchain space. It's an exciting time for sure. Thanks yes. so much, Frank. Appreciate it.